Welcome everybody to another episode of On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss hot penny stocks. I'm John Zadar, this is Tuesday, and it is June 25th. Now I'm sure you're already aware that I trade penny stocks every day. I'm always looking for stocks under five bucks that have potential to make us money. And at the end of the day, I share one with you. Well, the hard part about that is, is I normally have to kick some stocks to the curb. I find two, three, four stocks that catch my interest that I would love to share with you, but I only pick one. Well, the ones I kick to the curb, in many cases, I see the next day running and I hate seeing that. So what we're going to do today is look at a few stocks, but I don't want to make the video any longer. So I've got to whittle out some information that I would normally share with you. So what we're going to look at is everything we normally look at, except we're not going to go as deep into what the company does. We'll cover it generally, but I figured that's something you can easily take care of. So the first stock I want to share with you is a stock I covered back in April. This is NBCO Neon Bloom. Neon Bloom finished today at 2.3 cents and it looks like she's broke even. I don't know if she's had any movement. We'll see when we get to the chart. She is on the pink tier of the OTC, the bottom tier, the riskiest tier, because they don't have a lot of validated information down there. Not much at all. Normally, the only validated information you get with pinks are these two green ticks right here, and I'm always harping to you about these. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. It's the best you're going to get in most cases. So this looks pretty decent. So what does Neon Bloom do? Well, this is going to be our description, okay? Neon Bloom is a diversified enterprise group currently engaged in the development of new life science technologies, technology improved financial services, and other emerging businesses with potentially high growth and other cross industry segment synergistic qualities. With the closing of the acquisition of advanced executive sales, the company is expected to have annual revenues in excess of $20 million and growing. The company intends to shift its focus to the financial services sector. And that is why we're looking at it. That deal being completed with advanced executive sales. When we looked at it, they had mentioned the deal. We were waiting for it to close. It has just happened. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, we got 412 million outstanding. Wow. Wow. The insiders own most of them. And I do mean most. 396 million out of 412 million, which leaves us with a very small float of 15 and a half million. Relatively speaking, this is great. Generally speaking, this is great. That's a nice share count. I'm happy with that. Market cap, we're at 9.6 million. What about financials? Uh oh, falling downhill from zero up to 68,000, back down to zero. Quarterlies, we got nothing coming in whatsoever. But that's going to change. That's the whole reason I'm sharing this information with you. Balance sheet, they got $1,000 in the bank. No, it's not $1. We've got to add three zeros to any of these numbers on any of these charts. $1 wouldn't cut it. $1,000, that's what you need to keep the bank account open. Total assets, they got three quarter million. Total liabilities is more than that. $1.2 million. So we are holding just shy of a half a million dollars stockholder deficit in this company. I don't think we had any disclosures to actually consider right now. We don't. So let me share the news with you because the news is what it's all about. That deal has closed. They had first mentioned this deal back in September of last year. The company signs letter of intent to acquire advanced executive sales. Then in May, the company finalizes terms to acquire it. Then a month later, they finally close the deal. That is now. And this is what they tell us in the news press. Neon Bloom has completed the acquisition of Advanced Executive Sales, a leading financial services company providing business development and software solutions to all types of businesses specializing in electric payment and card processing. To get a little more information about the company, the company is one of the leading providers of e-commerce and point of sale transaction solutions, which enable it to provide secure interactions between merchants and customers for a wide range of industries with its payment processing platform. PayShield 
has over 100 e-commerce sites currently under contract with plans for near-term expansion with the acquisition of several other fintech firms with payment processing technology, which will complement that currently being utilized by AES, that is Advanced Executive Sales. Now, here's the point. For the year ended, December of 2023, AES had $23 million in gross revenue and net profit of $1.6 million. As we read in the description, the company expects now to be making an annual revenue of $20 million. And how much are they currently making? Zero. We got nothing coming in at any time, anywhere. So yes, this is a big deal. Let's go take a look at that chart. We've jumped on over here to my free trading platform, Think or Swim. And if you're ever looking for me, chances are this is where I'm at. We are now looking at ticker NBCO. This is Neon Bloom. Got her opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago in November, we had a very short-lived high of 16 and a half cents. She was jumping from just about 10 cents. Had a big drop, fell all the way down here and hasn't lifted her head for quite a while. Hitting a low in February of double zero five seven. At the end of March and beginning of April, she started showing some life. Volume was coming into the picture, and that's when we took a look at it. It was April 3rd. She was about 2.1, 2.2 cents when we looked at her. The very next day, she ran all the way up to 3.2. So there was a 50% gain to be had there. She came back down. She's gone under the 50, over the 50, and she's just basically going sideways right now. Now, there is no 200-day SMA on the chart. The 50-day SMA is boss. We haven't sold enough shares yet to have enough data for a 200-day SMA. Volume, nothing to get excited about. That's been falling away and dwindling away. But our oscillators tell a different story. Our oscillators show strength, show growth. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is climbing. Our MACD just had a positive crossover above the signal line, and it is climbing, with the green bars starting to come into the picture. Looking great. Our RSI is a bit weak. It is dwindling downhill just a wee bit right now, and she's cool. She's at 53, but we got a bonus in our oscillators. My PPO is on top of my ADX for a reason. My ADX is trend continuation. You look for a straight line. When the line changes, your trend changes. So this was going in a straight line when my trend was up. When the trend changed and started to fall, the line changed. Well, the pattern here, when your PPO, percentage price oscillator, is going up and your ADX red line is going down and they're spreading apart from each other, guaranteed, 100% of the time, your price is rising if that pattern is on the oscillators. So I really do like that. Now, it is interesting. This tells us that the price is rising, but we've got a red bar up there. Well, we're on the four-hour chart. Wait till we get down to the lower time frames. We'll probably see some green bars. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Going sideways, do 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 Not a whole lot going on here, except to say she's got these strange drops. Look, our 50-day SMA is up here just under two cents, under two cents. And this is falling below a penny, down to double zero seven. And where is it going in less than an hour? Boom, right back up. Then it falls again. Where does it go? Boom, right back up. Do you think these might be buying opportunities? Maybe I keep my eye on the next drop. Uh, let's see what we have for oscillators here. They're looking good. Our PPO is climbing and our ADX is still falling. Our MACD is climbing, green bars accumulating, and our RSI is still falling just a little bit and it's pretty flat and cool at 52. And again, we've got no 200 day SMA on this chart either. Take a look at our five-day, five-minute. Whoa, we've only got one moving average on this chart, the nine-day SMA. That's it. But it's not a bad chart. And look at that jump, folks. So do we have five days here? That's the 25th, and that's the 20th. That's five days. So we jumped here from that low we just looked at of 008 up to 2.5 cents. You're looking at a 300% jump right there. She's been going sideways ever since. I'd be looking for another drop and buy in real quick before she takes off just to get back up to even. Now we got to consider the news. 
They are supposed to be bringing in revenues now. They don't have any revenues. They've closed the deal. It's done. So I would think the stock is going to move. But of course, it isn't going to hurt you to do some more due diligence. All right, let's go take a look at that next stock. <laughs> Our next stock is pretty interesting. As a matter of fact, it's because of this stock we are looking at a few stocks today and not just one. I actually found this stock yesterday. It was one of the three or four that I had chosen, but I kicked this one to the curb because there really wasn't enough information to support a whole show. Then I saw what it did today and I was very frustrated. Look at the gains, folks. 1,279% gains. Urgh! Oh man, I wish, I wish, I wish I would have showed this to you yesterday. But I'm going to show it to you today because there is still a lot of potential in this stock, especially if she takes a dip. So this is ticker PECD, Pet Ecology Brands. She did finish the day at eight cents, up over 1,200%. She is on the pink limited tier, meaning she is late on one or more of her financials. If she doesn't get those financials caught up, she ends up on the expert market. She's got her verified information, she's got a verified profile, and a transfer agent verified. So in all those regards, she's looking pretty good, except for that Pink Limited. Now this is where the story gets interesting. PECD does not have management as far as I can see. They have no management. What they have is a custodian. Now maybe you've heard of other custodians, George Sharp, Karen Courier. These are people that find distraught companies, companies on the expert market, companies that haven't filed financials in a long time and have no management. They're abandoned boats just floating on the water. So they go to the court and get permission to take the boat in. They don't own the boat, but they've got to fix it. They got to clean it. They got to sell it. And that's what we're talking about here. A custodian comes in and they are basically paid to clean up the company to get all the financials taken care of, to get it back on the market, pink, to make a deal, an acquisition, or a merger. And this company has got a custodian. The name of their custodian is Ben Barry. He was appointed as the company's receiver on November 17th, 2023. My birthday, November 17th. Ben Barry holds the company's preferred A and B stock, which were issued to the receiver for services rendered. Now, what makes Ben Barry a man for the job? Well, they tell us over here that Benjamin Barry has worked in the public markets for several years through his company, Synergy Management Group, and specializes in rehabilitating dark and defunct companies for the purpose of restoring stock shareholder value. So this man is here just to clean the company up. He has no ulterior motives. He knows what he's going to get paid. So he's just doing a job. These are the sort of stocks I like to watch. I used to watch Karen Couriers. Eilis was one of hers. I-L-U-S. Yeah, she took that off the expert market, cleaned it up, got it pink, got it on the market, made a deal. And look what we got going on right now. And there's lots of companies like that. Well, Ben, the first thing he went and did was to take care of this Pink Limited. Now, remember, Ben came in in November. So, we're looking down here at their financials. I see they have an annual attorney letter here. The attorney letter comes with the annual report. You have to have an attorney letter with it. We have a quarterly report here. This is for the first quarter of 2024, the annual report covers all of 2023, and then we go all the way back to 2022 with the annual. Now, these are a mess back here. I don't know what to think about this. What I notice is that Benjamin came on in November. It looks like he's taken over from November on. I see all of the financial reports as being complete. The way I see it, and I may be wrong here, but the way I see it, we should be going up to pink. That should be dropping away and this should be a safe company. So what was the relative volume around this company today? That's a huge increase in volume, folks. But you would have to expect it with a jump up to 1.2,000% gains. She went from 369 shares, just 369, up to 288,000 today. Share structure for this company. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please be low. Okay, we can live with that. Outstanding share count is 73 million. Insiders have more than 50%, actually about double what we get. They've got about 50 million of those shares. We get the rest, 25 million. 
Now, that's not an absolute low float, but $25 million is a very good float. Market cap for the company is really low. We're down here at under a half a million. You're not going to see any money on the books because, well, she's a shell company, and that's what shell companies are. No businesses. They've got nothing going on. we got nothing in the bank. We've got no assets. We've got no liabilities. It's a clean shell, folks. We're waiting for a deal. Now, as I said, because this is a custodian, there's no scams. There's no ulterior motives. He's got a job to do. The court's watching. And he gets paid as soon as the job is done. So this man is hard at work right now. And I see a lot being accomplished. Now, let's go take a look at that chart. Well, this should be quick and easy. Not a whole lot of chart there to talk about. This is PECD, Pet Ecology Brands. And I'm actually opening up at the 20-day, one-hour view because there's nothing to look at past here. I mean, there is chart, but it is this. That low bubble of zero goes on and on for a while. How can a low bubble be zero? Zero doesn't even exist on the chart. So it is a weird chart. And that's why I'm starting right here, because this is when life starts coming into it. Although this is peculiar as well. If that's zero, you can see this is higher than zero. But it tells me over here the price is still zero. Come on, I know the price is starting to rise here, and I get the feeling there were some big rises there too. But we did have ultimately a huge run here, hitting a high of eight cents, giving us 1,279% gains. All of this is from one day. All of this volume is from today. And our osculators for what we have down here, our MACD and our PPO are looking strong. Our, our MACD has got a solid climb right now. Green bars are getting bigger and bigger and accumulating, and our PPO is very strong, but it's going sideways right now, which isn't a bad sign. Falling is what we don't want it to do. Sideways is okay. The best I can say about this chart, it's perfect. It hasn't had a bad day yet. Let's come on down to that five-day, five-minute. Now, that's pretty. Look how many bars she was getting on the five-minute. We had one bar one day, two bars the other day, one bar yesterday, and then all these bars today, and it's been climbing, floating on the only SMA she's got, the nine-day SMA. She did take a dip here. She went all the way down to one cent, one cent, and she came right back up, folks, all the way up here again. Oh, my God, you could have had 800% gains right there. Now, I'm going to come down to the minute. I want to see how long that stayed there. That was there for one minute, folks. One minute, maybe less. So you would have had to be watching this. Chances are you would have an order standing and ready. You already put in your order. You put it down there. Now, you know, this was the low one cent. You can see right there one cent. So that would have been a good place. Might be a good place to put one now. You could put in a standing order for however many shares you want for one penny. If it falls, even for 10 seconds, if it falls, ding, you got them, pow, right back up. And what just happened? You just made seven, 800% gains like that because of a standing order, because of a little bit of foresight. We don't have a lot of chart here, folks, but that is a hot chart. She is growing. She's a clean shell. She has got a custodial looking over her, not management. So he has the purest of intentions. He wants to succeed so he can get paid. I'm liking this one too. Not a whole lot more due diligence you're going to have to do on this one. Now, maybe you recognize this stock. If you watch my shows, you should. We looked at this on one of my live streaming events. It was brought to me by one of our viewers. This is PPCB Propank Biopharma. And this is a hot penny stock. She's got hot news. She's got catalyst. But what got my attention was the chart. It is a hot atypical breakout chart. You got the price up underneath the 200, both of them coming down and they're both leveling off and the price is getting ready to cut through that 200 and run. And I mean, it's looking serious. Over the last 30 days, we have had volume flooding in. She is beating her head on that 200, closing in on it. It looks like it's ready to go. PPCB, she finished the day today at 00135, and she was up almost 23% today. Now, she is on the bottom rung of the OTC. She is a pink, but she's current, though she's only got one of those green ticks we're always looking for. 
She's got the verified transfer agent. Where's the verified profile? I have no idea. And though I would like to see it there, it's not a deal breaker if it's not. But I normally won't stay in a stock long if I don't see both of those green ticks there. So what is Pro Bank Biopharma about? Well, they tell us here they're developing a novel approach to prevent recurrence and metastasis of solid tumors by using pancreatic proenzymes that target and eradicate cancer stem cells. That's where all cancer originates from. In patients suffering from solid tumors, such as pancreatic, ovarian, and colon cancer. So what was the relative volume around the company today? It's up, jumping from 39 million up to 70 million. Share structure for the company, outstanding share count is about 332 million. Insiders own less than a million of them. We get all the rest, 331 million. It's a pretty high float. Market cap is really tiny, under a half a million, 365,000. Financials for PPCB. Oh, we got nothing annually, but they're losing the same amount of money every single year. Quarterly, eh, same thing going on. We're not making any money, but they're paying out something for some reason. I don't know why. Balance sheet. What do we got over here? Now, don't forget those three zeros. They got more than six bucks in the bank. They got 6000 Total assets is 37000 Total liabilities, $3.7 million. So we are holding basically 3.7 million in deficit for this company. All right, how about the uh, disclosures? We got anything over there we needed to look at? Actually, we do. This is an 8K. Let me dive into this real quick just to see what we got going on. Purchase agreement, right. I need to go to the news because that's really where everything is at right now. We looked at this in the live streaming event and this piece of news was not there then because this just came out today. But they have been talking about this composition of pro-enzymes for cancer treatment. This is what they are focused on big time. And I'm going to jump into the piece of news that gives us everything that we're looking for. They tell us here that Propank Biopharma today announced that a certificate of grant for the company's pro-enzymes composition patent was received by the Japanese Patent Office. This is the fourth Japanese patent either allowed or granted in this important jurisdiction. Also, a certificate of grant was also received from the Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia for cancer treatment. This is the third granted patent in Malaysia. Now, these are the markets we're looking at. This is Japan. Japan is considered an important pharmaceutical market which is estimated to reach $46 billion in revenue just for pharmaceuticals. The largest sector is oncology drugs, projected to have a market volume of about $9 billion in 2024, which overall is experiencing a surge in demand for innovative drugs driven by an aging population and increasing prevalence of chronic long-term diseases. So Japan is hot for the drugs that they've got. Malaysia is one of the largest countries in Southeast Asia. In 2024, the projected revenue in the pharmaceutical market in Southeast Asia is expected to reach $13.5 billion. The largest market within this market, again, is oncology drugs, cancer drugs, which is projected to have a market volume of $2.4 billion. So those are the two markets they are targeting right now, huge markets, and their drugs are there with patents. It looks hot to me. And considering that they're not making any money right now, this could be what they need to get money on the books. But it's the chart that's got my attention, folks. All we need is a hiccup, somebody to blow. And that chart is going to start to run. Let me go show you what I found. We're back here visiting my old friend, Thinkorswim. <laughs> we are looking at ticker PPCB, ProBank Biopharma. Got her opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. It was almost a year ago we had a 52-week high. It was short-lived. She was up there at about 26 cents. Came down underneath the 200, and she's been under the 200 ever since, hitting a super-duper 52-week low of 0006 in May. 
Now, it was at the start of 2024, we started seeing some volume come into the picture. But it wasn't until we had a 52-week low hit that the volume exploded. Now, let's jump on down to that six-month, four-hour view. Here's a perfect picture of our atypical breakout chart. Price deep underneath the 200, both of them coming downhill, and now they're getting very, very close to each other. Off of that low bubble, she got up on top of that 50. She has been bouncing between the 50 and the 200 over and over again. Tell me that doesn't look like she's ready to jump over that 200 and climb. What's stopping her? The 200. It's too steep. She's waiting for it to get level. Then she's going to run. I'm 98% sure. Well, right now, right now it is just starting to level off. And our price is exactly where I want it between both 200s. My 200 MA and my 200 Hall. You hear me talk about the 200 Hall a lot. It's my favorite SMA because penny stocks like it. They jump down to the 200, which is where it looks like it's going, and actually use it as a catapult. They will bounce off of this and go right to the 200 and through the 200. As you can tell, I'm a little excited here because that's what I see forming up. Our oscillators, they did get weak. They've been falling ever since she tagged that 200 the last time, but everything is just now starting to come up. You can see our RSI is starting to climb. 20-day, one-hour view. All right, she's gotten up on top of that 200. She's bouncing on it with some nice bounces. She's come under it a little bit right now. I'd be watching this. I'd be watching for these strong MAs, the 200 haul and the 50 day coming down on top of her head. Once they come down past her and underneath her, they should turn around and start to push the price up. And that's when we should get our run. Our oscillators say things are doing that right now. Every single one of them are starting to turn up. Five day, five minute. Oh, that don't look pretty, does it? Yowza. Is that the same chart? Oh my God. Let me back up to the 15 minute. Well, that looks a little bit better. So there's those strong MAs coming down, beating her in the head. And look, she jumped right here. She is trying to make a change. She's come back underneath the 200 hall, made another jump back down to the 200 hall on our 15 minute chart. Looking at that five minute chart, she's come down <laughs> to the 200 hall right? You see this on each chart. She is all over this 200 haul. She bounced off it. And where did she go? She bounced off the 200 directly to and through the 200 day MA. But because it's too steep, she can't stay up there. She's got to get off of it quick or she'll tumble and fall even further. So she came back down and she's just come back down to where she started from. So that wasn't a fall. It was just returning back to home. Then she's had another bounce way through the 200 and then back down onto our 200 haul. What do you think is going to happen? Now our 200 MA is flat. She is bouncing off of the 200 haul. I think we're going to see a run, folks. I'm so excited about this one. PPCB is looking very hot to me. She's got lots of things going on and the chart is in a perfect place. And this one, it could use a little more due diligence. I've given you three stocks here, folks. Each one has got a different reason for running and a different reason for why we looked at it. And some of them could use your attention. A little more due diligence. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.